In part two here of voltage dividers, we're going to talk about voltage dividers and providing input protection to the Arduino. The main topic of discussion is going to be analog input protection. Basically, how do we keep from blowing up or frying our Arduino? A little review. Your Arduino has a limit of 0 to 5 volt for sensor voltages. And our voltage divider that we were last working with has R1 equal to 10K ohms and R2 equal to 5K ohms. That allows for a 0 to 15 volt range of input voltages. Can we connect directly to the Arduino without any problems and without use of the voltage divider? No! No! Anything over 5 volts, we need a voltage divider, and then we're going to need additional protection, which we're going to be discussing now. And you say, whoops, well, why not? We did all that work and calculations with voltage dividers. Why aren't the voltage dividers good enough? Well, it has to do with what these Arduinos are controlling, what kind of environment they're located in. If you're just using an Arduino for monitoring sensors, they are still in a noisy environment of the ROV. Now the motors that we have that are driving your thrusters are basically big coils of wire wrapped around that are turning on and off. When you turn the motor off and change direction, a nasty thing called inductive voltage spike is generated. These inductive voltage spikes can go well over your supply voltage and a hundred or more volts is not uncommon. And they also can generate negative voltages below zero volts. And it's the over five volt and the negative voltage that will fry your Arduino quicker than you can blink an eye. Here's a real crude plot of what an inductive voltage spike looks like. And you can see that it first goes negative. In this case, we're showing it about negative 70 volts. And then it will switch directions and go positive about 110 volts and then come back down to zero volts. And that's switching from 12 volts to zero volts. You'll have some huge spike like that. And that's what we need to go and uh, knock out. Now the time units here are not exactly accurate. All of this may take place in a few milliseconds or microseconds, but all it takes is a microsecond of a minus 75 volt spike to take out your Arduino input. So can we just modify the voltage divider? You know, scale the voltage divider so we could handle the high voltages? Well, we could do that, but there are some problems with it. If you scale your voltage divider to handle a 250 volt spike, your Arduino will only see about a quarter of a volt when your tether is at 12 volts. So you'll lose a lot of resolution for your measurements. And we don't know exactly what the upper limit to need to scale the divider for. Do we scale it for 100 volts, 250 volts, 500 volts? A lot of that will depend on your circuit. And the problem with doing this, you'll find out that you didn't scale the voltage divider high enough only when you burn out your Arduino input. So, now what about that negative voltage spike you saw? Voltage scaling won't eliminate that negative spike, it will only reduce it. And even reduced, it will be below zero volts and able to destroy your Arduino input. So obviously just changing the scale on the divider is not going to work for us and we have to come up with another solution. Now I'm wondering if any of you have had an aha moment now, a moment of revelation where some of you have lost cameras and Arduinos, and the term I keep hearing is we fried the camera. These inductive voltage spikes will destroy electronics in a flash. And all of our electronics must be protected from inductive voltage spikes. An example of that protection is the make camera filter that sets up to uh, filter the 12 volts that's provided to the cameras. Let's talk about some diode basics since we're going to be working here. We're working with what's called a shot key diode, and these are very fast switching diodes. 
And a diode has two terminals. And the symbols here is a little triangle with a line. And on the left you have what's called the anode. And on the right you have a cathode. Now we look at the voltage here and basically you can think of the diode as a one-way switch. If the voltage on the anode side is more positive than the voltage on the cathode side, the diode will conduct and pass current through it. If the voltage on the cathode side is more positive than the voltage on the anode side, the diode will not conduct and it looks like an open switch. Let's put uh, 40 volts on the anode and 5 volts on the cathode. And you can see that the anode is 35 volts more positive than the cathode, so it will conduct. Let's try that with 0 volts on the anode and minus 100 on the cathode. Now 0 volts is more positive than minus 100, so the diode will conduct and turn on. We're going to use these concepts later on in building our input protection. There's our voltage divider. In this case we've got 10K and 10K. That was, If we remember that was our divide by 2 voltage divider. Now let's take that divider we modify the divider so it will handle 0 to 15 volts and we're going to put a diode in here connected to the voltage divider output with the anode connected to the output of the voltage divider and the cathode connected to 5 volts. If we have a VN that generates an output at the voltage divider of 0 to 5 volts the diode won't ever conduct because the voltage divider output is always less than 5 volts. Now let's say we put a VN of 30 volts. Now 30 volts through the voltage divider will give you an output of 10 volts at A0. As we know that 10 volts will destroy our Arduino. But look at this in that 10 volts is greater than the 5 volts up here connected to the cathode of the diode which means the diode will turn on look like a short circuit to this and we will start conducting current and dropping voltage through R1. R1 becomes our protective device. If we do the math here if we have 30 volts at VN and 5 volts at the anode of diode D1 that'll give us a diode drop of 25 volts across R1 and a 2.5 milliamp of protection current going across R1. The voltage drop on R1 will prevent the voltage from exceeding the 5 volts there at the anode of D1. And as the higher the voltage goes, the more voltage that's dropped across R1. But that diode D1 will protect our analog input, and that analog input should not see any voltage much greater than 5 volts. So with this, we've got the positive spike protection taken care of. Now let's go to the negative spike. I took the positive half off just for simplicity and we'll focus on the negative spike. Now, let's say we had our minus... Now, let's say we have a minus 40 volt spike coming in. It's a negative voltage spike and that will take out the Arduino just as much as a positive spike will. And now we're looking at this diode. We have minus 40 on one side and what happens is that diode will start conducting immediately as it st starts to go negative because any negative voltage the on the cathode is more negative 
than the ground or the zero volts on the anode. So if we have, even if we have a minus one on that diode, on the cathode, the ground connection is zero, which is more positive, which in turn will allow diode D2 to turn on and start conducting. Now that conduction will allow the voltage drop across to R1, and again we'll have that voltage drop going on, which will take place so between D2 and R1. The two of them will form input protection to protect the A0 from negative spikes. Now we move on to our full protection. It's made up of D1 and D2. Both of these diodes are shock key diodes, very fast reaction time. And you see they're connected here with one anode to ground. The anode and the cathode of D1 and D2 are connected together. And then the cathode of D1 is connected to five volts. That, that makes your simple input protection circuit coupled with the voltage drop capability that takes place on R1. Now you can make this voltage protection out of simple single diodes connected up on your circuit, or you can buy a three terminal diode, and there are a lot of surface mount three terminal diodes with the anode and cathode connected together in common. In the next video we'll see is how to go and connect up a voltage divider.